Earlier this year, I reviewed the willful but lovely Merison DAC1 digital to analog converter. This time it's more affordable sibling, the Frero and the optional linear power supply, the POW1. Let's first look at the Frero, which is French for little brother, and that's what it is, a little brother to the Marison DAC1 I mentioned earlier. Both are digital to analog converters, DACs for short, and although many of you know what it does, there are still questions on how to use a DAC. If that's boring to you, you can skip to the next chapter by hovering over the timeline. Let's have a look at some possibilities. The Frero is shown here with the standard switch mode power supply I will evaluate first. Later on in this video I will look at the Frero with the optional POW triple linear power supply. To use the DAC you need a digital music source. That can be a computer that has music files on its hard drive and a music jukebox program running. Preferably it does not alter the music files. There are many so called bit perfect music players that do that. To be able to play music from internet sources like internet radio and streaming services like Tidal, Cobus and Amazon that offer CD quality or better and Spotify that offers MP3 quality, the computer needs to be connected to the internet over your home network. To send the digital music files to the DAC you could use a SPDIF connection using a 75 ohm RCA cable provided your computer has such output. I use a USB cable between the computer and the Frero. The outputs of the Frero are connected to the amplifier over a pair of either XLR or RCA cables. The amp is, of course, connected to either a pair of headphones or, my preference, a pair of loudspeakers. Often the music player software on the computer can be controlled using a smartphone or tablet. The disadvantage of this setup is that the computer due to the limitations of USB, needs to be at maximum 5 meters from the DAC, thus must likely be placed in the same room. And computers can be noisy, while the aesthetics committee might also object to the presence of a computer in the living. The alternative is to place the computer elsewhere in the house and connect it to your audio over the network. To do that you need a network player or network bridge, connect it to the network and connect the digital output to the Frero. Again, a smartphone or tablet can often be used to select the music, depending on the network player you choose. Since the Frero has five inputs, you can connect other digital sources as well. For instance, your old CD player might sound considerably better when connected digitally to the Frero. Other digital sources are the TV, portable music player and gaming console. Time to take a closer look at the device on the test. The thick iron housing has an aluminium front, measures 225 by 180 by 50 mm and weighs 1 kilo. On the front there is an LED that indicates the power status and an LED that indicates it receives digital audio in the correct format. The input selector lets you choose one of the five digital inputs. At the rear we see the DC input for the wallward power supply with above it the power switch. For the sound quality it is best to leave the DAC on at all time. Next a DC input on the 5 pole XLR to be used with the POW1 power supply, on which later on more. Then we get the digital inputs, a USB audio class 2, two optical toslink inputs and two SPDIF inputs on RCA. On the output side we see a pair of RCA's that offer single ended analog out and a pair of XLR's offering true balance analog out. Inside we see one large circuit board that on the left holds the power section that will clean up and stabilize the incoming DC voltage to the voltages needed inside. Next to it the interfacing with the digital inputs. Here we see the Atmel and Xilin components conform the Anamero setup. Anamero is known 
for low jitter interfacing for USB audio class 2. All digital inputs are galvanically decoupled. Centrally placed two clock crystals specified at minus 95 dB C per hertz at 100 hertz, which is nice for this class of equipment. The more popular specification is 100 to 300 femtoseconds depending on the measured band. Input selection and interfacing with AES3 inputs is done by this AKM chip. The actual conversion is done by the Burr Brown PCM 1794A. Burr Brown calls it an advanced segment DAC, meaning that the incoming signal is eight times oversampled, then split up in two ranges that are individually converted to analog, adjusted in amplitude and then summed up. This way a better linearity can be achieved. I measured that to conclude that even down to minus 120 dB the deviation is less than half a dB, which is great. The impact of this on the sound quality is limited though. I have heard DACs with far less perfect linearity that also sounded fine. The time integrity, something that is very hard to measure, is far more important. Marison uses linear phase filters that by nature have severe pre-ringing when used as a brick wall filter. But if you use a slow roll-off filter and have it start at somewhat lower frequency, pre-ringing is drastically reduced. It does allow a bit of aliasing but that influences only the high frequencies and are, when done right, inaudible. This is what Marison has done, as can be seen by this measurement. There is less than 0.2 dB roll off at 15 kHz and 1.9 dB at 20 kHz. Under normal conditions this is inaudible. If you are troubled by this, check the frequency response of your speakers at these frequencies. By the way, the well respected cartridge manufacturer Autophone already in the 70s stated that they had their cartridges roll off slightly early to improve phase and transient response. But let's get back to the inside of the Frero and point you to a voltage regulator very close to the DAC chip. The DAC chip produces a current analog to the digital signal that is converted to a voltage by four discreetly built class A circuits and followed by four output circuits. These four circuits are needed since the Frero has two balanced outputs, each output having a positive and a negative circuit. Like its big brother, the Frero is PCM only and limited to 192 kHz. When done well, there is no need for higher sampling rates like the Grim Audio digital player has proven to me. I can be very short on usage. Connect your digital source or sources to the digital inputs. Select the input you want to use with the selector on the front and that's all. There is no remote control and volume is adjusted on your amplifier. Again this is the setup using the Woolworld power supply that came with the unit. Later on in the video my experiences with the optional linear power supply. For the review I used my setup too. The amplifier is the Marantz KI Pearl Lite, an older model but amps in this class and above last very long. It drives the Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers connected over Kimber 4 pier loudspeaker cable. They are supported by the REL T5 subwoofer that is connected to the loudspeaker terminals on the Marantz using the cable that came with the sub. The source is the Intel NOC i3 inside the Grim Audio Mu1 player, but I didn't use the Grim Reclocker and Scaler functions, so I effectively used a NOC i3 over USB, hence the pictogram of the NOC. It was connected to the SOTM SNH10G network switch. The equipment is housed in a target rack. The first thing I noticed was the deep lows with fair texture, very good for this price point. The stereo image is also above average and has a fair focus. Resolution in the mid range again is above average while the highs are on par with comparable products. All in all a DAC that finds its place in the higher regions of my setup 2A and sounds very promising for the next step, 
the marriage with the POW1 linear power supply. Since the Frero has a DC input, you can easily select another power supply, provided it can deliver sufficient amperage. The included Woolworth power supply is capable of delivering slightly over 3 amps at 9 volts. Using one of the known audiophile power supplies can clearly improve the sound quality, but Mirason has a better solution, the POW1. It has a dual 12 volt DC and 4.7 volt DC outputs combined in a 5 pole XLR, housed in a cabinet of the same size as the Frero, so 225 by 180 by 50 mm. It weighs 1.8 kilos. The front has no controls nor LEDs, so let's go directly to the rear, where we found the power switch, the IC mains inlet with integrated fuse and the DC outputs on 5 pole XLR. Using the supplied cable it is connected to the 5 pole XLR on the rear of the Frero. This way they form a nice pair, although the colour of the aluminium front of my review samples differed slightly between the two. The mains input has a filter in its housing. From there the AC goes to the toroidal transformer that has three secondary windings, 2 times 14 volts 15 VA and 1 7.5 volts 10 VA. The 14 volts AC lines go to the 2 times 4 ultra fast silicon diodes that turn them into rough DC. A more standard rectifier in between these three 5600 microfarad electrolytic capacitors does the same for the 7.5 volts AC. The three capacitors clean up and buffer the voltages and then are sent to this part of the board where the voltage regulation takes place, resulting in 2 times 12 volts DC and a single 4.7 volts DC. The 12 volts lines are for the audio channels, the 4.7 volts for the digital and logic electronics. When connected to the Frero, a solenoid switches from the 9 volts DC input to the 5 pole input rather changing the power supply structure of the Frero. For the listening test I used the earlier setup but this time the POW1 power supply instead of the Woolward one. Ok, this really makes a difference. The lows got even more authority, the mids opened further and the highs are clearly cleaner. Transients are more powerful, the stereo image is wide and deep with clearly better focusing. There now is a convincing black background, or rather there now is a DAC that convinces me to hook it up to my setup one. Here the front end is the same, the SOTM SNH10G switch and the Intel NUC i3 in the Grim Audio, connected to the Frero over a network acoustics Eno USB cable and of course the POW1 power supply. The amp now is the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier connected to the Frero over Grim Audio SQM XLR interconnects. The PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on ISO Acoustics Gaia 2 isolators are connected to the amp over AudioQuest Robin Hood loudspeaker cable. Where the Frero with Woolworth power supply is set up to material, when combined with the POW1 it clearly finds its place in the lower regions of my setup 1. Again the authoritative lows are remarkable, making perfect use of the speaker qualities in that region. The mids are very clean and offer very good resolution. I prefer this combo over the MyTech Brooklyn with its standard power supply. Highs are clean and refined. The stereo image is wide and deep and the instruments in it are very well in focus. All against its competitors of course. This is a very musical deck when used with the POW1. I already expected a very good sound quality from this product, given the DAC1 I reviewed earlier. And after I met founder and designer Daniel Frauchiger at the Munich High End Show in May earlier this year. For 1200 euros you get a very good DAC for the money, 
with the option to let it grow further with the 690 euro POW1 power supply. If there is budget right away, go for this combination and if not, no you can add it later when a new budget comes available. There are many DAX on the market in this price range. There are even a lot of good DAX for this money. But there are limited DAX that sound like the Freo POW1 combination, certainly at this price. Again a bombshell to leave you with, but I will be back next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you on the next show or on the HPproject.com. Whatever you do, enjoy the music.